Good morning. Hello, good morning to all of you tuning in on this Wednesday day. hump day, <laughs> which means church day. Church tonight. At uh, seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Restoring hope. What you preaching on? Have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you better tune in. That's what he's saying. He don't want to give it all away right now. Uh, he's going to preach the word is what he's going to preach. Uh, so don't forget, tune in tonight, share it. Go ahead and click and hit the share button on these programs. Listen, all of you who tune in faithfully and we're getting messages like, we hope that this doesn't stop right, when right. You know, life goes back to whatever is normal. Sure. And we are we are going yes. to continue. We're going to, to continue try to do this yeah. and do this yep. uh, because we feel like it's a commission of the Lord. Amen. And I'm so thankful for. Um, well, it's interesting how the Lord works because we had kind of talked about oh, absolutely uh, and doing something like this, yeah. and we talked to you about doing a show. You did, and because We've had of, lots some, of meetings. some open doors <laughs> that are coming open uh, yeah. com that have been made available to yes. us. And so uh, it's interesting how God just kind of says, all right, it's time. Well, it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's time. The, you know, the eaglet's getting pushed out of the nest. Right. Okay. When, when he says it's go time, mm -hmm. he means it. That's like right. he's not playing around with that. So um, I wanted uh, to share our scripture reading on Wednesday. I always look forward to it because we're in the book of Psalms and, and, Luckily, we'll be there for a while. <laughs> uh, so it's always like, you know, this <gasps> breath of fresh air day to, to get into the Psalms. It's one of our favorite I love places Psalms. to find. I love Psalms. I love Proverbs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Both of those books are very, very much, you know, you've got that encouragement and then you've got the instruction. Yeah. Um, so Psalms 45 through, uh, I believe 47 is our scripture reading today. And I'm going to hit it right in the middle because uh, that's where we ended yesterday talking about the in-between. Right. Um, and today is the middle of the week for us. So oh. Psalms 46, and he's talking God, the refuge of his people and the conqueror of nations. And um, this is a Psalm of the sons of Korah. And so just listen to this wording. I can't just pick one of these, but we love this scripture. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with its swelling, mm. there is a river whose streams, streams shall make glad the city of God, mm. the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst, the midst. of her. He is in the middle. God is in the, in the middle. middle. Mm. And she shall not be moved. God shall help her. And at the break of dawn, the nations raged and kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Yes. And then I love these. Selah. Mm, yes. Selah. Which means, Amen. look, we don't have to say no more. Right. But God is in, in the, the middle. middle. He's in the middle. Look how he works. He's just, we ended yesterday talking about, you were talking, talking about, about. We got on Daniel for a little while. We can start a thing. And, right. Ending a thing, right. but it's that middle, middle the process. place, yeah. the process that the process. we cannot forsake. Right. And God is, he, listen, he's in the beginning, he's in the end, but he is in the middle to give us strength and give us encouragement and to give us wisdom for the journey. The process is uh, one of the most difficult things <laughs> uh, to, to even think about, you know. A little and, bit. And we, we love starting a thing. We love... Uh, when God gives us the vision, he, to, he'll tell, he tells us that, uh, he, that he gives his people, those he's called, yes. uh, uh, the, the picture of, and sometimes it's in pieces and Absolutely. sometimes Most it may look time. like, uh, 
one thing in one season and he it may expand you know the, God's a God of expansion and increase and so you, you see those types of things and we like to think of the outcome of a thing mm -hmm. but it's the process that's 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 hard. It's the process well, that's most difficult. And don't difficult. you think the pro that's the process <clears throat> causes people to give up? Oh, yeah. And um, I, we, we were talking about Daniel was found in excellence right. yes. of spirit. Is right. that how it was worded? Yeah. He had an excellent spirit. Daniel yeah. had an excellent spirit. He had the favor of God upon him so as much that uh, the king's attention was turned to him. The favor of the natural king was upon him. Uh, it was turned toward him. There wow. was favor with the king of King Darius, but also obviously there was favor, favor with, with the king. The king. Yeah. And so uh, when you have favor with the king, you have protection, you have provision, you have everything that you need at your disposal because um, you've moved from this place into another dimension. And Daniel was faithful. He was faithful. He was faithful. He wasn't distracted. What was it we said yesterday? Uh, he didn't get, dis Daniel wasn't distracted by the den. He was not distracted. Because he, he realized what was inside. He, he realized that his petition was more powerful than the principality. He, you on. know, he realized that his prayer was powerful. And I think it's so interesting, the season that we've been in. Mm -hmm. And you know, you start these things as a pastor and you know, let's focus on prayer. Let's, let's mm -hmm. focus on the, the gifts of the Spirit. And, mm -hmm. you know, because the, the difference between the pastoral gift is that there has to be that training and equipping for the purpose of ministry. Right. Uh, and that, that happens through uh, all the offices as well. Yes. You know, but, you know, understanding to hear God's voice and what direction are we going. And we've been, as you know, I mean, on petitions and prayers, uh, different kinds of prayers, targeted prayers, uh, backing it up with the Word of God, all of these things that we've really honed in on yeah. and focused on and repeated. And repeated. Uh, and so uh, because we understand, we've seen in our congregation, we, we understand and believe in intercessory prayer. We have an intercessory team here yes. at Restoring Hope Church. Yes. And Daniel understood the power of his petition. Yes, he did. You know? Well, the faithful, the faithful. Yeah. And sometimes it's easy to start out being faithful. Right. And trouble along the way. And and I'll, I'll say this, I think a lot of people um, not just pastorally, but people start out in most things with good intention and right spirit and right heart. Mm -hmm. But trouble along the way can make you lose heart. It can make you become hardened. It can make you be frustrated right. and lose, lose the, the zeal and the passion um, for whatever it is that you do. It, that's at a job. That's how marriages fall apart. Um, that's in, you know, you saw our new puppy yesterday. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's exciting. And then at three o'clock in the morning, you know, he's wealthy and wanting to go out. And, you know, then you start going, I don't know, this is what I want to do. Right, right. Because opposition will either make you or break mm -hmm. you. And one thing about it, in every area of your life, at your job, your relationships, if it's not worth being tried, it's not worth having. Um, if it cannot make it through the fire, right. uh, then it was built on a faulty foundation. Right, and right. that's one thing that I, I want, I, you know, I said we were going to go here. And um, in the book of Revelation, you know, we've got the Alpha and the Omega. We have the beginning and Revelation is the consummation right, right. Of, of God's bookend of, yeah. of His his desire mm -hmm. for a people. And there was one church um, in the book of Revelation, there's seven churches mm -hmm. that the Lord sends angels to go and speak the Holy Spirit, the right, angel right. of the church of whatever. Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, there was the dead church there, you know, that the half the half alive right. church of Ephesus had lost their first love, which potentially is where you might be today. And, and I think you see a lot of these elements in the churches of America, exactly Absolutely. what you're saying. 
losing losing that passion and losing that it's the zeal. process it's the middle it is the, the middle, middle. The, the the being hit and understanding listen expect impact when you are when you are preaching the good news of Jesus Christ there is always opposition to come up against the good news but the faithful church the I, faithful church I, I want to talk about the faithful church and I pray um, to be you know is it possible because listen they weren't just handed the keys for nothing so right, let's right. read in Revelation 3 mm -hmm. And seven, the faithful church, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right, which tells me your church has an angel. Right, right. Praise God. Yes. A keeper of the flame. Right. Praise God. These things says, uh -huh. he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David. Mm -hmm. Now listen, the key of David, the power in worship, Isaiah 22, 22 the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, who shuts and no one opens. Listen, I know your works. Right. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. Right. For you have little strength. Mm. So this tells me they've been in a battle. Right. For you have little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Mm. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. So he's saying all of those who spoke vile mm -hmm. in the synagogue of Satan and that is spewing lies, I'm going to cause them to know that I love you because you have kept my command to preserve. Listen, mm. I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come up on the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast the, what you have that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and mm. the city of my God, New Jerusalem, comes down from heaven. My God, I will write on him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So this church right. had faith trial mm -hmm. and persecution, right. but they upheld, they endured, they stood and did not deny his name. They were in faithful. The trouble. They it's were just faithful. exactly the picture we talked about yesterday with Daniel. He was faithful. They were. He was an considered. excellent of spirit, yeah. you know, and it's not how fast you finish the race. That's right. It's how diligent you are how in diligent. the race. You are. You know, uh, the, what is it, the, the turtle and the, what was that tortoise called? Tortoise and the hare. Yeah, the tortoise and the <laughs> hare, you know. Well. Uh, because some of us can get comfortable in what we're good at. Yeah. And, and think that, hey, well, we'll make it, our, our abilities will get us there. Boy. But, but the turtle was diligent. And, and diligent. And crossed and won, won the, won the race. And then this chapter goes on into the lukewarm church. Mm -hmm. and, and you remember years, well, about a year ago, I preached a sermon between the anointing and the glory. Yes, uh huh. And um, so this goes into uh, the Laodiceans. Mm. And I would rather you be hot or cold. Right. These things, says uh, Amen, and the faithful and true witness from the beginning of creation, I know your works, that you are neither hot nor, nor cold. cold. I wish that you were. Yeah. Hot or cold. Mm -hmm. Now that always, you know, we've, we've preached this a hundred times. Mm -hmm. All, I mean, we've heard it our whole life. Right. I've, you know, been. Cold and indifferent. And yes. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord says, I would rather. Yeah. You be hot or cold. Cold. But because you've chosen to be lukewarm, mm -hmm. I'll spew you out of my mouth, which means I'm going to vomit you. you. You disgust me. And I feel like... You decided to stay in that place, yeah. I, I, yes, that it's almost as if that's, that is the, 
the struggle of even coming to church and getting comfortable in, you know, just not not working, not telling anybody about Jesus, mm -hmm. almost uh, being critical of everything you see, but coming in and setting and doing nothing. Right, right. And a lot of people, and you know, who am I to say? I, I did not write the scripture and I do not claim to be a theologian, but I will tell you that the spirit I, of God, I feel like gave me a revelation that the, um, you know, he fellowshiped with Adam and Eve in the cool, cool of, of the, the day. day. Right. And on a mountain, it was cold. Cold, yeah. And he fellowshiped with, with God. Uh, you know, Moses did. He fellowshiped with God on the mountain. But at the base of the mountain, uh, there was a fire. Right. And so uh, hot or cold, I often say that, you know, it's it's the anointing. And the glory. And the glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the anointing, that red hot passion. Mm -hmm. Listen, even, even in... Your your marriages. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about this. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're married, if you're single, whatever. That passionate pursuit right. of getting to know you. Right, right. Uh, of of you know longing to to be with each other. And when you first come into relationship with the Lord, right. that is that is how you are. There is a burning right. passion. Right, vigorous. To dig in and to yeah. know Him. Yeah, yeah. And. Um, John Kilpatrick, uh, when he came and preached here years ago, mm -hmm. he he preached and he said, the anointing is for the work. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The anointing is so that you can be anointed and put your hands to the plow and do the work. Right. And he said, and you've heard us say this, but the glory is for the rest. Right. Which means God comes in and does the work and you get to bask in right. His presence, right. and and we both have been in both of those elements. Right. Well, the anointing is for the process. It's for that you start that way because in order to get through mm. the middle place, you have to maintain yeah. what what God has given to you that 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 Bigger passion, that desire, that all of those things. That's the thing that's going to drive you. That's the thing that's going to push you, wow. and. Um, it's when we get to that middle place and neutral and that complacent. And you can always, uh, si uh, complacency is always signaled by criticism. If there's a, criti if there's a critical spirit, it, a lot of times it's because they're complacent because they lost what they once had. Wow. And so in order, rather than going back to the first love, first love. they decided to set and complace and be complacent and and just be a bench warmer. Well, and they lost their focus. They took their eyes. They off. lost the focus. And when you lose focus, you're distracted by everything. Everything. Anything and everything distracts you. That's why you get into. That's why churches are destroyed. And the enemy's uh, not ignorant in his ways. No, he is very cunning. Uh, the the devil is designed to distract your destiny. Yes, he is. He's designed, that's who he, he's, he comes to distract. And, and still kill and Still destroy. kill and destroy. Uh, so if he can get you immobilized and complacent um, and, and lose that drive and lose that passion and lose that hunger, yeah. you know, religion is, that's the way I look at religion. When I see religion, I see dead, dried up, just set in their ways. Well, they refuse to eat from anybody's table because they think they know it all. Right, absolutely. And so they criticize the meal that's being laid out. Yeah, they, they get s stuck in their own structure, mm. you know, and the thing is, is God's always moving. The river's flowing. He's in the midst If you're of not it. moving, you're not with, with what God is doing. If you God on that moving. banks, you ain't in it. That's right. He's in, the middle He's in the middle of the waters. He's in the middle of the, river. of the river. And it's in the middle truly where we are the most effective <laughs> in the kingdom of God. We have to realize that. We, we have, have to, to see that because if we don't realize it, it was in the middle of the water that Peter was able to walk. Mm. But he had to realize what he was, he, he had to keep focus. That's if he it. kept focus, he was able to do what he couldn't do before. Well, the minute he took his eyes off of Jesus and put his eyes on the storm, he began to That's see. right. He began to be distracted. And your distraction is your demise. You boy, 
You're full of these word comparisons. <laughs> I like it, though. But it's the truth. You thinking quick today, Pastor. Well, it's... So your distraction is your demise. And here's the deal. This is in every area every of our area. life. In, it's in important we talk about it. it. Well, for now, it is without a doubt because that's what I'm saying. This, the, the beginning of this trial that we're all facing together, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, oh, well, we can, we can do this. This is exciting. I can get this done. I can right, do this. Right, right. But now that there is <laughs> extended chapter as right, you have right, preached before right. this, oh boy, no, this ain't so fun anymore. Right. And sometimes marriage gets gets that way. Sometimes marriage is work. And mm -hmm. you know, you and I, and we say this, um, in, in, in all reality, we say it privately, we say it publicly. You can ask um, our closest friends and family. Right. For the most part, we have a wonderful marriage. Yes. We truly are each other's best friends. Support, yeah. But there's days I get on his nerves. Sure. I know that's so shocking. Yeah. And there's days he gets on mine. <laughs> so, but you know what? It's in those moments that I do not allow the distraction of the enemy right. to detour because right. all it takes is one little second. It's it's in parenting. The the bad days. Listen. What was it you said yesterday? You was talking about Saul's armor that there was having a, a chink in the armor. There was a chink in the armor, and the enemy can get right one in there. Little one tiny little crack. crack. That's what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. He's looking for one little crack. And we talked about the mind and the thoughts and this one little thought, whether it is your church, whether it is your faith, whether it is the person that you set in the sanctuary with when you do come to church, or if it's the person that you live with in your home, the enemy is looking for, it doesn't have to be a big old blow up. Mm. One little crack this big Come and on. he goes in and rips it to shreds. That's why the divorce rate in America is on an all time high. That's why we are, there is literally this incest spirit mm -hmm. within the church because there's not new uh, conversions mm -hmm. taking place there. You know, I've heard many preachers say it and it's so true. You know, we're we're swapping uh, church members as much as uh, most people are swapping mm. husband and wife. Mm. And let me tell you, the swapping, swinging spirit mm. is all up in the church. Mm. It's it's in the church spiritually. It's in the church uh, sexually. Mm. It's in the homes. And I mean, I, I'm just going to get real. How do you know that? Because we cancel it. Yeah. And and that's not coming again. Listen. There's hope for you. Yes. We have seen God completely restore marriages right. and completely restore spiritual lives. The enemy is out to kill, steal, steal and, and destroy. destroy. And you cannot, in this season of getting frustrated, allow the distraction to be your demise. Right, right. That for one little argument uh, to, to this big of a crack. Yeah to come and be something else and cause your eyes or my eyes or yours to go in another direction right. and pull your attention away from what God has set before you in the path because that leads to your destiny. You'll trip. You will stumble. You'll stumble. And you guess what? You won't just stumble by yourself. Saul's sons were killed before Have you him. ever been running and looked somewhere where you weren't you know, I'm when, not much of a runner, so I try. You, when you're focused on the finish line, <laughs> yes, then y you can you can endure it. endure it. You can run at a steady pace, but once you start getting distraction of those around me, <sighs> those are who are in front of me, those who are behind me, those who are aside of me. Uh, it's one thing to encourage people, but it's another thing to be distracted. So this is two days in a row that mm -hmm. we are well, actually three if you count. Monday, starting with Peter and John. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Peter for a second, but then he kept his eyes on Jesus. And Peter and John were able to go do ministry together. Right, right, right. They went Effective, and very, uh, very effective ministry. Uh -huh. So don't allow the enemy to trip you up and, and begin to and, and that, despise. In essence, I believe what God is saying right now. I feel because that. Because we're getting ready to step into um, a, a season that we've not, we've been saying it. <laughs> we've not seen it. We've been saying it, but we've not seen it. Yet. But we're getting ready to see 
the things that we've been seeing. And in order for us to, in order for us to see it, we cannot be distracted. Cannot be and distracted. so God has really allotted this time. And we've said that in the past weeks, no, but, but, it's, but it's he's allotted this for time sure. for us to get focused. Get our house so when we are order. getting fo focused, what is the enemy going to do? Distract. He's going to frustrate the focus. He's going to do whatever he can to come in yeah. and trip us because he, he understands where we're at. He understands where God desires us to be. So whatever's on the other side of this, uh, this season of maybe you're in that season of persecution <laughs> and, uh, but you will not be harmed. You, you will not, you, you will not be harmed. And I, I'll you even go as it. far to say you will not be wounded. I'm going to say that you will not be wounded. because there are seasons where we're wounded, but we're not destroyed. Not this season. But this is not that season. Endure God is it. protecting you. He's covering you. As you focused on him, as you're under his, his wing, you're under his protection, uh, you're in the hidden place with him, that secret place, and God is protecting those who want to be close to him. Well, and your and desire spouse him. is not your enemy. Right. Your children, your parents, it, it, th that's not right, your enemy. Right, right, right. So let's remove the distraction and, and the, you know, someone, um, one of the old revivalists said one time, if I stopped to try to silence every barking dog, I would never make it to my destination. And now that we have our new puppy, <laughs> listen, at, you know, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning when he's barking and, and bottom line, we are an authoritative voice right, over him right. and he knows it mm. and he heeds to the master's voice. Right, right. That's one thing that we've learned. He, Aaron can tell him, no, but you don't have authority over every barking dog. Right. And don't try to make that your job. Ignore them. If it's your dog, speak to it and silence it. If it's not, ignore it mm. and move on. Because you will be so distracted and trying to silence something that's not yours to silence. Mm. Keep moving. So this lukewarm that's church, so how they lost it. I, I feel like this in between, this complacent state, mm -hmm. you start out passionately mm -hmm. in love with Jesus. You start out in passionate pursuit, ready to do ministry, and then, and then everything gets shut down. Right. And now you stuck right. and you're frustrated and you can't do what it is that you love to do and and but here's the deal your love for Jesus should never be based on what you do for him wow it cannot be it can't be my I, my love and my relationship with the lord is is deeper than preaching the word i love him because he's my savior that's it and i am in love with him because he is the Lord of my life. He yes. is my master. Yes. They, I, I preached it like this, started up the mountain, right. excited, exuberant, ready to take this mission on, and then got about halfway up. It started looking at the rough side of this thing. Whew, come on. And listen, ministry is not fun. Sometimes marriage is not fun. Right. Sometimes parenting is not fun. Or starting a Sometimes business. Sometimes having a new puppy is yeah. not fun. Sometimes starting a business is not fun. But here's what I can tell you. Or the process, the process whatever of it. Whatever yeah. you are looking at, whatever you magnify, yeah. is what in will manifest mm -hmm. in your life. Right. If you choose to look at the rough side of this mountain, mm -hmm. you will become even more disdained and you will not finish this race strong. I love what he said. You can keep your eye on the finish line. I, I've, he's ran a marathon. I have not. Yeah, yeah. My, this, this body was not made to run. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever. I, clearly. <laughs> I, do, I do a good speed walk. Oh. But, uh, and, and listen, I can trip all by myself walking. I don't need to try to run. But in keeping your <clears throat> eyes on a finish line, um, you can endure and see the end result ahead of you. Here's the thing. We are not at the end today. We are pressing through this thing. Get the promises of God before you. Right. Get the glory before yes, you. Yes. Know that when you reach the top of this mountain is a glorious moment 
in him yeah. that there is there's a presence coming that we cannot even think ask imagine there is an outpouring that is on the way the awakening is taking place now and it is not time for the church to be distracted right. uh, and, and uh, to be swallowed up by the voices around us. It's time to keep moving with what you know God spoke to you. Keep it before you. If you've got to put it on your refrigerator, if you've got to put it on the mirrors, right. if you've got it literally on the nightstand, that that's the last thing. Those declarations that pastor has been doing and he said it, this is, we are declare a, de a declaration for a manifestation, right, yes. which means means whatever you focus on will manifest right, in right. your life. And so I pray that we choose to open our mouth and declare the promises of God in this season. Bless those that persecute you. Don't don't even look don't even pay attention. Just Father bless them in the name of Jesus. If your spouse just, you know, Listen, you want to know, we tell everything. <laughs> Pastor Aaron loves him some potato chips. Loves Love them loves them. Like that is his life. Hot chicken, oh, yeah. potato chips, and a uh, Butterfinger Blizzard at Dairy Queen. <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> if, he could ha if he could have it every day, he would. With extra Butterfinger Hurts and my a bones, shot of- though. I can't hardly do it now. <laughs> a shot of caramel. <laughs> if you want to get on his good side, bring him, bring him a bag of potato <laughs> chips, a gift card to Dairy Queen. Uh, take him to eat hot chicken. He will love you for life. And he does love him some Mexican food. Mm -hmm. But listen, chomping them chips, I, and I've seen it's a, it's a legit disorder. Yeah. I don't claim it, but it happens. Yeah, go ahead. I'm like, please, just, just eat them. You don't have to. Right. And my, my issue that drives him crazy is I may happen to leave cabinets open. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You and, and the other Elijah. Four, other four. The other four. Elijah is <laughs> Elijah very much sure. like me. Pan, like we get in the pantry, the pantry door's wide open. Oh yeah. He's like, I know one doors of you two's open, been. yeah. Yeah. I always go back. It's probably because I get distracted. Right. <laughs> Long story short, show grace to each other. Right. Laugh it off. You, you forgive me? I do. I, I forgive, forgive you. you too. <laughs> and move on and know that there's a greater purpose. Don't allow a, a chink to, to get in the way right. for an arrow of the enemy. Well, and two, you. you were talking about going back to that race because we are running a race. We are running a race. And the people around you should motivate you. Mm, not, not pull you or distract you right. away from purpose. Let it be motivation, not intimidation. Damn. There you go. One more. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's the thing. Let it be motivation. Y'all write these down. And, and the truth is, and this I've ran a marathon, so I know what this is. Running, Bragger. running alone. <laughs> I'm not bragging. I probably would fall over today trying. But running alone was much more difficult than running uh, mm. with people, with individuals around me. And a matter of fact, um, if I didn't get distracted by what everybody else was doing, it they became you. motivation, even hearing their footsteps and hearing them around me. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's a good message. An army, the you know? army, and we should, iron sharpens iron. Right. And I think that's why we felt, that's why God chose this season to do this, to mm -hmm. continue to keep the army of the living God on track in the spirit. Right. And know that We're iron, all going in the same direction. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get distracted right. and don't, uh, don't get demotivated uh, and don't allow that to become a demise to your life. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the thank you, opportunity, God, to break down your, your word and to uh, allow the Holy Spirit thank to you. guide us and lead us today. And, and, and the, these last few days, God, Jesus. I believe that you're speaking to us people, uh, not to be distracted uh, by the devices of, of our enemy, of our adversary. We understand that he is, uh, mm -hmm. he is the, the enemy that comes to sift. He's the enemy that comes to roar as uh, an authoritative figure. And he, ha he does have authority, liar. but greater is the authority over us. And so Lord, we thank you that we realize that and we focus on that. We, mm -hmm. we focus on the promises. We do what your scripture says rather than 
to, uh, to, to marinate and to medi uh, meditate you, on what has happened and the things around us and to magnify um, what we've been through and what we're going through and what the enemy is doing. God, we magnify what you're doing. Thank you, God. We magnify who you are. Keeping our eyes on you. We magnify who you are in the process. A there is a promise. And God, we know that you are the promise, mm -hmm. that you are our miracle, that you are our breakthrough. And right now, I just speak to those who may have been in the middle. You're in the middle and that middle is intimidating you. But I ask that right now there be a shift okay. from that intimidation to motivation. Motivation. That God, that there be such a motivation right now that the things that used to distract us is bringing, determine, is, is bringing a spirit of determination yes. in us. And Lord, we just give you the glory and we give you the praise because we know that where you're taking us to uh, is the reason that we're going through. Where you're taking us to is the reason that we're having to go through this process, that we're, having, that we're, that we're able to go through the persecution. Some of us are in a season of persecution. You say, why do you know that? Because it's been personal to me mm. and there's been persecution, but I know on the other side of crucifixion, mm -hmm. there's resurrection power coming out of this. Thank and there's a glory that will be revealed at the end of this test. There's a glory that's about to be released that's, a, that's being declared and will manifest in time and in season. And I believe that we are right on the verge, right on the edge of what God is doing and about to do. And we give you all the glory and praise. Lord, I pray that you would just touch your people today. Bless them and keep them. Make your face continually and perpetually shine upon them. And give us all your peace so that we will not remain distracted. In Jesus' name, amen. These present trials are not worthy to be compared for the glory. Amen. That, that will be revealed. Amen. There is an open door, and because you have <clears throat> endured and you will endure, you will be able to be trusted with the keys. Amen. Listen, we'll see you tonight, 7 o'clock. Somebody needs to rejoice in that. Amen. I hear some, I hear some keys rattling and some doors opening. Mm, that's good. God bless God you. God bless you.